welcome back to round two of our FPV battery shootout. In the previous test, I discharged these batteries to 80% of their rated capacity and saw which ones did good and which ones didn't do quite as good. But that's not how a lot of people fly their batteries. They don't fly based on milliamp hours, they fly based on voltage. So in this test, I'm gonna discharge these batteries to 14 volts and see how many milliamp hours and what kind of flight times I get out of them. Let's go take a look at the results. The first thing I need to do before we get into the results is I need to throw these tests out. Now I'm showing you this because some of you might have looked at this spreadsheet uh, if you looked at the public link in the last couple days, this data was up there. I want to make sure you know, I was recording a voiceover for this, and I noticed that these two batteries were performing very, very similarly. Which, if you think about it, one of them is a high volt and one of them is not. They should not give the same milliamp hours. So, either I failed to charge this one to 4.35 volts, or I overcharged this one to 4.35 volts. I don't know which it was, and I'm not going to go back and find out. Uh, so I'm just going to toss these results, and we're going to keep moving. Now, could, why don't, I'm not going to rerun the tests because, you know, I want to get on to the higher discharge rates, and I think we have a pretty good sense of how these batteries perform, so I don't feel bad about leaving those out. Also, I think most people are more interested in the 1300s than the 1800s. So we're going to throw those results out and we'll keep testing these 1800s going forward. Uh, I do want to say I am charging the high volts to 4.35 volts per cell. Some people wondered about that. Yeah, of course, the, you can charge a high volt to 4.2. That's not going to really show anything. And if you look at the milliamp hours here, you can see that all of the high volts delivered far more milliamp hours than the, uh, than the standard LiPos, as you would expect. So let's get into the results and see how these batteries did. The first thing you'll see is that the stop voltage for all these tests was 13.99 volts. And of course, that's because that was the stopping condition for the test. Discharge the pack all the way down to 13.99 volts and then see what you got out of it. The resting voltage in the SAG. The SAG, I think you want to look for a battery here that has less SAG. And as a result, it'll have a lower resting voltage. This is the opposite of what we did in the previous test. In the previous test, I said that a higher resting voltage was better. So that's because we sucked a fixed capacity out of the battery. Therefore, the more the battery's resting voltage after pulling the capacity out, the better the battery was doing. But in this case, we stopped at a fixed voltage. And therefore, the lower the resting voltage, the less sag there will be. And the less sag there will be, the better the battery is doing. So for this test, lower resting voltage is better, opposite of the previous test. Obviously, lower temperature is better, more milliamp hour is better, more milliamp hour percent is better, and more time is better. Why did I pick 14 volts here and not some other number? 14 volts corresponds to 3.5 volts per cell, and not everybody likes to fly their batteries down that low. In fact, some manufacturers recommend 3.6 volts per cell as the minimum for keeping your batteries happy and healthy. But we're racing uh, FPV mini quads. We're not concerned with keeping our batteries entirely happy and healthy. And in fact, what I found was that if you only discharge these batteries to 14.4 volts, some of them were only at 60% of their rated capacity. Depending on the amount of sag that the battery experienced and various other factors, you really needed to pull these batteries down to at least 14.2 volts in order to start seeing something close to their rated capacity. So I chose 14 volts because it rounds out to 3.5 volts per cell, and I feel like that's an okay place to fly your batteries down to. You'll see that all of these batteries recovered to well over 3.6 volts per cell after they were allowed to rest, which I think is, is, a, is a safe place to be. So that's where I came up with this number four. You may not agree with it, but hopefully you'll be able to still decide which batteries are which. I will say this, though. If you're only flying your batteries to 14.4 or maybe even 14.2 volts as, the, as, their, as their stop point, you're probably not getting anywhere close to your full rate of capacity. That's your call if that's a decision you want to make. So let's take a look at these 1300 milliamp hour packs. The Bolt, the Mad Dog, the Green Gorilla, all three are high volt packs. And the Green Gorilla is actually not a 1300 milliamp hour pack. It's a 1400 milliamp hour pack. Or is it? Is that 1400 milliamp hour rating honest or is it marketing BS? If we look at the discharge percentage, we can see that all three of those packs, when discharged to 14 volts, gave about 89 to 97, 87% of their rated capacity. So based on that, we can conclude that this 1400 milliamp hour rating is essentially honest. 
To get to about 89%, it would need to change the rating to about 1375 milliamp hours. So I'm willing to call that rounding error. This battery also gave about 10, 11 to 13 seconds longer discharge time. Again, suggesting that the 1400 milliamp hour rating is honest. Gave more watt hours also. However, because of its higher internal resistance, it did experience more sag and it finished the test at a significantly higher temperature than the other two batteries. For the standard LiPos, the SMC and the Bonka, again, we see 84 and 86% of their rated capacity. I feel like anything above about 80% of the rated capacity down to 14 volts, I would consider to be acceptable and, and between 85 and 90% is, is excellent or good. That's my standard, you can take it or leave it. We saw a discharge time of three minutes, 28 and three minutes, 31 seconds. This is, by the way, consistent, roughly consistent with what I see when I fly the batteries. Obviously, it depends on how heavy I am on the throttle, but for a typical flying, a flight time of around three minutes, three to three and a half minutes is what I see from my copter. These batteries experienced exactly the same amount of sag and finished at exactly the same temperature. And then finally, we have the Green Gorilla 1100. Nothing to compare it to in this round of testing. Maybe in the future round of testing, we'll get some more 1100 size batteries. But for now, we'll just take a look at its results as they stand on its own. We got 905 milliamp hours when discharging to 14 volts, which is only 82% of the rated capacity. Now that's a little lower than the other batteries that we're seeing. It's still above 80%, but it's definitely on the edge of maybe this uh, 1100 milliamp hour rating is not quite uh, accurate. And we can also see that the resting voltage 14.82 volts with a lot of sag, 0.83 volts of sag, and a final temperature of 128 degrees Fahrenheit which is over the 125 degree Fahrenheit threshold for what is best for your batteries. So uh, this is a, again starting to support the conclusion that I came to in the previous video, which is that this 1100 rating may be better if you treat this battery like a thousand instead of an 1100. That for whatever reason, because of its small size, higher internal resistance, it just can't take being run quite to the edge the way that some of these other batteries can. We got 80% of our rated capacity, but the battery sure was not happy about it when we did it. So let's wrap up. High volts, as we know, deliver more power for a longer time and more milliamp hours than standard LiPos. Duh, that's the whole point. We are continue to confirm that high volts are fantastic batteries. They are lighter and not much more expensive than standard lipos if you're flying and you can get a hold of high volts you should fly them and if you're racing and the race organizers have made the mistake of allowing high volts to race against standard lipos and you are willing to do anything to win a race you should be running high volts but if you're a race organizer you should not be letting high volts race against standard lipos because it's completely unfair okay enough about that the so green gorilla 1400 milliamp hour has a basically honest milliamp hour rating, but when you look at the amount of sag and the temperature it experienced by the end of the test, one has to wonder whether it might be better to treat it as a 1300 and not run it all the way down. Now, if you're in flight, you're correct that that temperature will be lower because there's air moving over the battery. But if we're getting to 122 degrees in this 20 amp test, it's not gonna get any better when we go to the higher amperage and the amount of sag it experiences will also not get any better. So I think things are only gonna get worse for this battery going forward. I'm half tempted to treat it as a 1300 and see if I can, it can give a little bit of a better performance being treated as a 1300. But if Green Gorilla is gonna label it as a 1400, that's how I'm gonna test it. And I think that's, that's a fair thing to do. Between the Bolt and the Mad Dog, uh, we see a sort of a continuation of what we saw in the first test, which is that these two batteries perform very similarly. The Mad Dog slightly, edges out the bolt in flight time, milliamp hours, and milliamp hour percent. It's, it's, it more significantly edges it out in watt hours delivered, 17.7 .7 versus 17.4, okay? Has slightly worse sag. Uh, and so we, we come to the conclusion that this Mad Dog at $40 compared to the bolt at only $26, that the Mad Dog might slightly outperform the bolt, but for the price, I, I think it's hard to justify if you can get a Bolt for 26 or a Mad Dog for 40. I'm not sure that the, the slight improvements are really going to be worth it. But on the other hand, if you're racing, that extra 3 watt hours, 0.3 watt hours, 
may make a difference. You can have higher voltage for a longer time, and that may make a difference. And if you're the kind of person who's racing for reels, paying an extra $15 for your battery is probably not a big deal for you, in which case the Mad Dog, it, it, it is performing a little bit better than the cheaper Bolt. Between the SMC and the Bonka standard LiPos, the SMC continues to put in a good showing, at least at this 20 amp discharge rate. The uh, SMC gave 16.1 watt hours compared to 16.3 for the Bonka and gave slightly less milliamp hours and slightly shorter flight time. Now, I said when I was comparing the Bolt to the Mad Dog that maybe 0.3 watt hours is enough to make you choose the Mad Dog over the Bolt. And I could say the same thing about the SMC. The Bonka gave 0.2 watt hours more. It's a small amount, but maybe it's worth paying that slight extra bit for the Bonka. By the way, I do need to correct myself from the last video. The last video I had the SMC listed at $19. That's for the 3S, not the 4S. The 4S is $25. So the Bonka is not as actually as uh, much more expensive as it looked like in my previous video. Sorry about that. And uh, I've corrected the previous video as well. All in all though, the SMC putting in a good showing and it, we'll have to see how things go at higher discharge rates to see if it continues to hold up. Finally, we've got the Green Gorilla 1100. The conclusion I came to in the previous video sort of stands uh, when this battery is ran according to its label of 1100 milliamp hours, it doesn't seem to do as well. And again, we discharged here down to 14 volts. We got only 82% of the rated capacity and the battery got super hot. This battery may be a fine performer if you need to save weight, but definitely don't run it all the way down to 4.0. Don't pull 900 milliamp hours from it and watch the temperature it's coming down at. I wish I had more 1100s here to test to say whether this is just a thing that is normal with 1100 packs or whether Green Gorilla's pack specifically is better or worse than the rest of the, the pack, if you will, pun intended. Uh, so at this point, I'm not prepared to say that this particular pack is good or bad, but I will say that if you're running this pack, you definitely want to be a little bit ginger with it or you're going to puff it. And I hope that in future testing, I'll be able to get like a Lumineer 1000 milliamp hour or something like some of these other high C 1000 to 1100 milliamp hour packs and see whether they're all like this or whether the Green Gorilla one is the exception rather than the rule. All right, well, that finishes up this round of testing. I know that you guys are hungry for the high amp testing. I am working on figuring out a way to discharge these batteries at higher amps using some uh, steel fence wire and a bucket of water and a LiPo battery. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, in the meantime, I'd love to hear from you. Which of these tests do you think was most useful and reflective? The 80% discharge or the 14 volt discharge? I kind of have an opinion myself, but I'd like to hear what you think because I don't think it makes sense to run two rounds of testing for every battery. So leave it down in the comments. And in the meantime, happy flying.